Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have an awesome podcast. We are in Las, Las Vegas, John's hometown. We have John Kohler on the channel and he's going to do the handheld mic for us. How are you? Good, Jillian. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you are almost 30 years, mostly raw vegan. Yes, 28 <laughs> years. Started in 1995. Wow, crazy. Okay, that's a long time, right? So you're one, Absolutely. Of, the, one of the OGs. You have three YouTube channels. Right, three. Tell the people I'm what they are. They're all amazing. Yeah, so... My first one that's the most popular is Growing Your Greens, where I teach people about organic gardening, growing fruits and vegetables and other plant foods and growing them in the most nutrient dense, highest quality, um, microbial rich soil. So you guys could have the highest quality food. I travel around and make videos at different farms and interview worm farms and harp, you know, grow things in my backyard in Las Vegas, one of the most difficult places to grow food. And I just show it on YouTube so you guys could learn with my journey and hopefully start growing your own food because to up your neck your raw food game you got to start growing your food because you're going to change the quality of the food which a lot of people in raw foods unfortunately don't talk about my second channel is discount juicers i've been selling juicers online now for the last 25 years i started my business in 1998 selling juicers i started making youtube videos about juicers about 15 years ago i compare all the major brand juicers i'm not affiliated with only one brand like some influencers are. Um, yeah. So I try to remain, you know, unbiased and just tell like it is and show the pros and cons so that each person could get the machine exactly right for them, whether it's a juicer or, you know, new age vacuum blending that preserves more nutrition than standard blending, which unfortunately is so common in raw foods today, or even next level technology, like I'll be getting into freeze dryers and sharing more about that as well, which is which is next level dehydration. And of course, my last channel, which I believe should get more views. <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous of all your views, Jillian. You've been, <laughs> you doing, get views you've been too. rocking YouTube so good. And Thanks. You, know, you do you work so hard. Like I'm going to say that right now. But yeah, my my OK Raw channel where I teach about raw foods and my my style, raw plant based diet that's uh, mostly raw with some minimal amounts of heat processed foods, very specific methods to heat my food when I do cook it. Okay. So, wow. Amazing. You're amazing. All these things, the juicing, the gardening, there's so many things I want to talk about. And the viewers have a lot of questions. Do you have a girlfriend? They want to know about the personal life, the science, because you have a lot of science behind you. <laughs> I look you. up published studies, yeah, yeah in so my we, spare time. What I love about today's guest, John Kohler, is he is science-based. And so is the sponsor of today's video. A big thank you to Osea Skincare for sponsoring this video. I love Osea. Everybody loves Osea. It's great for a Christmas gift or a stocking stuff. And I just started using these. I'm going to do a little demo and show you guys. They're incredible. You can save so much right now. You can save an extra 10% right now too with my code Jillian Holiday and 33% on top of that, which is awesome. And it's just so chic, amazing. Mother-daughter created business based in California. Vegan, cruelty-free, seaweed-based body and skincare. We're going to start by showing you guys the Andaria Algae Body Butter. It's clinically proven to hydrate your skin for up to 72 hours hours, which is huge. And it's great for anti-aging and hydration and just getting that glowing skin. And you can use it all over your body, which is awesome. And I just love that it's vegan, cruelty-free, seaweed derived company. Like I'm all about sea products and the ocean. I think it's amazing. And everybody loves this. I put it in my story and everybody was like, I love Osea. So this is great. Look how soft and smooth it is, you guys, especially compared to my other leg because I didn't use it for a while to show you guys. This is the Andaria Algae Body Oil. Woo -woo. And this is clinically proven to instantly improve the look of your skin's elasticity and leave skin super soft and it's smoothing and glow boosting, which we all want. It's nice, these products are yeah, so nice. chic. Everybody loves them. Pick them up this holiday season for stocking stuffers, gifts, or just for yourself. They're so beautiful. They have a huge following for a reason. Everybody loves Osea. Thanks to Osea for sponsoring today's video. Go pick up some Osea products, you guys. This limited edition package is amazing for this holiday season. Huge savings. We love it. I'll put the code down below and the link down below. And let's get back to this video. So we want to talk <laughs> a lot about the science on this channel, all these different things. So where do we begin? Watch till the end. This is going to be good. But I want to start with, for anybody watching who doesn't know, just a quick recap of your story, why you do this, why you've been living this healthy lifestyle for almost 30 years, how it's changed your life. Take us a little bit through that so people can connect if they don't know you, if they're watching. Yeah, sure, Jillian. So, I mean, the reason why I got into this diet is because I almost lost my life when I was younger. So, I mean, that will give you some really big motivation. And so I was hospitalized with spinal meningitis and I, the doctors had no cure for me. They had no drug or nothing because it was a viral version. And they said, you might not make it out of the hospital alive. 
And I was like, this is not a fun place to be. And <laughs> oh. I'm like, like, I really thought about like life. I'm like, man, this is the last thing I could be seeing right now in my whole life is just inside the hospital and the TV and just lying there in pain because they had to do like, you know, whatever they had to like shoot me through my spinal cord and take a spinal fluid tap and spinal oh. tap and like to check this stuff out. And it was like, in, I was just in pain and like major flu like symptoms. Think COVID, but like worse. <laughs> I was like vomiting when I got into the hospital and it was just terrible. So like, luckily I made it only through, I could say higher powers because I, I prayed, but I also thought when I was in the hospital, like, Hey, even if I made a million dollars, right? Like everybody, you know, wants to make a lot of money and think, oh, if I'm rich, it solves all my problems. Like if you have all the money in the world, there's the richest people in the world that are just so unhealthy. And in some cases, I look at them on TV and I'm like, that person could just croak tomorrow. Cause like they got all this money. They've been really good at making money, but I don't think they're really good at like taking care of their health. They rely on their doctors to do it, which that's just emergency. Like <laughs> that's in case of emergency, not like preventative. Right. So then I'm like, man, so like maybe I shouldn't focus my life around making a lot of money because I'm almost going to lose my life. And I couldn't write the doctor like a million dollar check and say not valid unless John walks out alive. Like all the money in the world couldn't have bought me out of that situation. And people lose their lives every day and money's not going to buy you out of that situation. But what will buy you out of that situation is having resilient health and building your health from the ground up and investing the time and being taking proactive measures so that your health doesn't go into the toilet like most people, you know? Yeah. So that was really my motivation after I got out of the hospital because the doctor said I had complement immune deficiency, which was like all these big fancy words, which if I had to sum it up, because I'm not a doctor, I would say that they blamed that I got this disease on my bad genes. So I had a chronically weak immune system because of my bad genes. Wow. Yeah. And this didn't surprise me so much because as a child, I had these autoimmune conditions such as allergies, asthma, and eczema. Yeah. And so these are all autoimmune conditions that now later after looking back at it and looking up many different published studies and seeing, you know, doctors who discuss this stuff, it all comes back down to my microbiome wasn't properly formed when I was a child, in my opinion, based on some of the science that's out there now, um, because I wasn't a breastfed. So if I was properly breastfed, I think that I'd be in a much better situation, although still genes could have played a factor. But anyways, while they did say I had something genetic, you know, there's also there's this thing called epigenetics, which is the genes loan the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. Mm -hmm. So back then, you know, I wasn't eating a raw diet. I, I ate pretty healthily. You know, I think I'd quit eating red meat at that point, but I, I read all my ingredient labels and thought I was eating healthy, but evidently it was not healthy enough. So luckily I made it through the, got out of the hospital and then I knew I needed to make changes. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any internet back then. <laughs> and so I just <laughs> like went to health food stores and like tried to learn things. I saw a juice man infomercial yeah. on TV and he said in his infomercial, he said, juicing could build your immune system. And that's all I'm like, that's what I need to do. I need to juice because it builds your immune system. I'm listening to this guy because I don't know nothing about health. And I got on the phone and ordered the juicer and they didn't have Amazon two day prime shipping back then. <laughs> so they're like, it's going to be there in two weeks. I'm like, what? I need to start juicing today. And so I went to Walmart and actually Walmart actually had a juicer on clearance. So I'm like, yes, they got a clearance juicer. But like, I'm like, wait a second. This thing is like 20 bucks, but I just spent $199 back in the day on this juice man two juicer, <laughs> which is a lot of money, right? Yeah. Like a lot of money. I mean, juicers now actually compared to the price then is like, they're, they're quite affordable for what you get. Mm -hmm. And so then anyways, so I bought the Walmart juicer and then I started juicing like you showed in the infomercial with parsley and stuff and basically I bogged down the motor and then it started smoking. And so like the juicer just really was a piece of junk. So then I'm like, ah, this is why I'm buying a good one, right? You're like, I'm getting into juicers. I'm, now get, look I'm at getting you. a good one. Yeah, and then I mean, that kind of led me into juicing as my entry level into the raw foods that because hey when you juice you're eating more raw because juice is raw right mm -hmm. and then i started eating more salads and eating more fruits and then i went on a whole colon cleanse and learned about that and my skin cleared up and i'm like you know what i just need to live this way for the rest of my life 
because even the doctors with the best medicines couldn't clear up my skin with the you know dry skin and eczema but there's one colon cleanse thing and juicing i did cleared up my skin so i'm like this is how i need to live for the rest of my life and at that point i'm like i'm gonna just go for it and live raw the rest of my life and i mean at that point i was pretty it was a carrot and a stick julian because i thought like if i go back to eating cooked foods it could trash my immune system and then I could get a disease again because the doctor yeah. said I could get a reoccurrence of that disease or another one because I was like the boy in the bubble movie. You, did you mm -hmm. did you watch that yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like I wasn't that bad, Yeah. you know, but I wasn't like a normal person that could like maybe fight off stuff. So then I, that was like, so that really made me take my health seriously and like any way I could build my immune system. And so that's been my primary goal and motivation all these years on how do I, how do I improve what I'm doing to make a raw diet even better and take it to the next level for me. Wow. Right. There's so much to talk about. Okay. So the breastfeeding thing, this really interests me because it's funny either today or yesterday, I was thinking randomly about the gut microbiome and I was thinking I wasn't breastfed ever. I wonder if things would have been different if I was breastfed in my life with my health and happiness and like different things. So have you studied this over the years? And like, I don't know. Do you think, are there ways that you think if we weren't breastfed and we have a compromised gut microbiome in your opinion and the science, you know, what are the ways we can strengthen that microbiome to live healthier lives, happier lives? Cause there's such a connection right to our gut and our brain and our gut and our happiness and our gut and our health. Like it's all in our gut, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> so like, here's the thing, like I know for me and what's up with mine. So the, the question I have for you, Julian, is did you get a gut microbiome test? Um, no, I've actually never done a gut microbiome ah, test. So that yeah. would be the first step because I'm not going to tell you that your gut is messed up if you don't have a test. Because like in my opinion and based on the science, what yeah. the science says is that if you didn't get breastfed, you're more likely to not have a high level of bifidobacteria. Okay. But then also yeah. if you're eating junk foods, that's also going to kill off your bifidobacteria because you're not feeding them. Or alcohol so, and stuff too, yeah. probably, right? Well, I don't know about the alcohol because I don't drink, but like, so what I'm going to say is that like, I, I don't know if because you weren't, maybe because I know people that were, were not breastfed and their bifido is fine. So, so I'm going to say for <clears throat> me. These tests, okay, I know they have like these gut microbiome tests on the market, right? But I've had some people come on and say like, these tests are just BS. They're not like, in your opinion, are these tests good? And Is there a test you recommend? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I think... You know, like that it's all new. It's like this is a relatively new area. I think it's interesting to look at and something that people should take into consideration if you're serious about your health. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could poo poo anything. People poo poo like donate giving blood because you're leeching your body of blood and don't get a test and all this stuff because you're going to lose, you know, a couple of vials. But like then there's, you know, people that like are detoxifying from heavy metals and they give blood and then the heavy metals leave them faster. Mm -hmm. So, I True. mean, it, you it, everything's always a pro and a con and like it's it's unfortunate in my opinion in raw foods there's so many there's so many dogmatic statements that are like it's all this or it's all that and it's <laughs> yeah. never all right or all wrong it's always somewhere in between there's always pros and cons to every juicer there's pros and cons to getting a microbiome test you know yeah and definitely you want to go with a company that you know has good solid data and they're still working on you know take taking the data that you get and then and then basically running that through their, their system, their program, and then giving you recommendations and sharing with you guys, ensuring with people like what, what that means. And yeah. that's the part that is questionable. And there's yeah. different kinds of gut microbiome tests. There's like a shotgun and a 16S. And the most common ones are 16S. And I've done four of the 16S ones so far. Wow. They're about $100. But, you know, actually just this later this week, you know, it's um, Black Friday. So I'm going to be getting the shotgun one, which is like $200. Okay. So how are your results? Like when you did your first one, were your test results good? Were you happy with your microbiome? I was not happy with my microbiome. Wow. Basically when I saw it, because in some things I was not in line, like my bifidobacteria was not in line. My acromantia bacteria was not in line. These are some foundational species based on what I've learned and if they're not happening to me, I mean, I'm doing, I'm kicking pretty good butt for not having these two species, like really in mm -hmm. my gut. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, so a lot of things are going right, but like, Hey, could I be better? Right. And like some of the study, I mean, they, a common thing that said, Jillian, is that your gut microbiome is like 70% of your immune system. 
Yeah. So why am I so interested in my gut microbiome, Jillian? Mm -hmm. Because it's 70% of my immune system and I almost lost my life because of immune compromise. Right. And so that's, I, it, I think it's connected. Like my immune system compromise. I got sick because my immune system wasn't working good because my gut microbiome was messed up. And then also maybe my gene influences. Right? Yeah. So that's why this, I take this really seriously. And people just like, I mean, it's my life, man. <laughs> that's the most important thing I got. Right? Yeah. And you must be so grateful after all of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It just makes me think because I had a lot of health problems after my first daughter was born. I had glu big gluten intolerance. Mm. I said celiac, all these autoimmune problems, all these health problems happening like through my life. And I think it was people used to tell me it's your gut. It's your gut. And I used to blow them off. Like a couple of people would DM me and tell me, tell me that. And now I see like after eating raw foods, like I don't have that allergy anymore because I had a cheat day in Miami like years ago and had gluten and then I had no reaction. So I feel like I did a lot of work on my gut, but I want to do more work. Is there like foods you recommend that we can have to like strengthen our gut foods you recommend that are good for it, good for our immune system and strengthening the gut and any foods you think that are bad for it that can kill the bacteria that we want to avoid? So this work is really challenging, right? Because everybody has a different gut. test. So if you got your microbiome tested, right, you're going to have some bacteria that are really high some bacteria really low and you're probably i bet you a million dollars right <laughs> that your your results are not gonna be the exact same as mine yeah. like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh -huh. like highly unlikely that your results are gonna be identical to mine because no two people could probably have the even if you're twins you're not gonna have the same exact there's gonna be yeah. something different mm -hmm. but nonetheless so like for me to say like oh you sh everybody should eat True. these three foods because yeah. these are gonna be good foods for you you know, that'd be criminal on my part because I, I don't know what your gut looks like. So yeah. here, like for me personally, I could tell you my experience. My experience is that I had I had an overgrowth of Provotella bacteria. And huh. in my opinion, and I'm not a doctor, I had the Provotella overgrowth because I was really good at eating foods that fed the Provotella and it was going nuts. And like a lot of my gut is this Provotella bacteria, Co Provotella coprae, and it's just going crazy. It's like, yeah, John's feeding us, man. We're kicking butt. <laughs> Because, and in my opinion, right, it's because I've been eating a really high fruit diet all these years. And I, wow. I, I look up stuff and it says, Provotella doesn't like potatoes. Guess what I've been avoiding as a raw vegan for 25, eight yeah. years? Cooked potatoes, right? <laughs> and so, like, maybe if I had the fruit with some cooked potatoes, right, that would have hindered the Provotella growth, right? And maybe I didn't eat enough, as much fruit and maybe I started eating more beans. And beans have things called galacto oligosaccharides human breast milk has human milk oleosaccharides hmos right yeah. and that's like the third largest component of breast milk and if you're not breastfed you're not getting the hmos and the hmos our gut are, are we can't digest the hmos wow why would our mother <clears throat> out of the breast put hmos if a child cannot digest them mm -hmm. it's because the bacteria that the child has in its gut can and then they they flourish and they go nuts and they'll make the they'll increase in the bifidobacteria and the, the gut microbiome will form properly in my opinion. Wow, interesting. And so that's all these basically fibers or other prebiotics that feed our gut microbiome that you're not eating is what you really need the most. So if you're eating a high fruit diet, that's great, right? But you're missing, you know. Re fibers and resistant starches that you're not getting that are only in fruits yeah and that's really the next level of a raw foods diet in my opinion nobody discusses this very few people in raw foods discusses this and that's like this is what i talk about because it's been very important to me and my health and maybe it's important to you maybe it isn't but how will you know if you get a microbiome test and it says you're a hundred on the chart dude I want to know what you're doing because you're doing it right. But if you eating a high fruit diet, you feel great. You're kicking ass. You're hella strong. But your microbiome test says you're 50, you know, and you have a really crappy score. Yeah. Then, you know, if you think the microbiome is important, then you might want to, you know, do something about it and, and become better and become healthier. And so that's been my whole goal is how can I elevate it to the next level? Right. And so for me right now, because microbiome science is, is relatively new. I've been really getting into that because it's something that I never considered on my raw food path that I want people to take into consideration on yours so that you don't have to go through the school of hard knocks. Because what I believe is that if you're eating a standard American diet, mm -hmm. which tanks your microbiome, tanks, 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 that'll 
put your microbiome in the in the dirt. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I even saw somebody using the same exact microbiome test that I got, Jillian. That was like a Chinese herbal practitioner person, and her result was like thirty on the test out of a hundred. Whoa! It was like so she's doing this Chinese medicine that's supposed to be so healthy, but <laughs> yeah. she's like a thirty. Like that's I mean that's worse than mine, and mine was like around a seventy. I've got up to like eighty now. Wow! And so, but more importantly to me is that, and this is just the, whatever the guide, but what's more important than just the number they give you, because that doesn't really tell the whole story, it's about like the diversity. So the diversity of yeah. how many different microbes are like in your gut that they could find out. So my first test was 750. That's when I just did it and I wasn't wow. eating a whole lot of heat processed food or cooked food. Had a pretty limited, you know, diet, just eating fruits and vegetables like we're supposed to. And then I, I changed a few things because I'll tell you, like, based on what you're eating and your microbiome, you should eat these foods. Mm -hmm. And that, that'll, that'll, you know, better your, your microbiome score in the future. And so, I mean, some of those common things I've seen on that, that is like drew some artichokes mm -hmm. because it's rich in inulin and FOS or fructo oleosaccharides, which are not in fruit, guys. It's in starchy, like, tubers. So think like uh, drew some artichokes, which are in season right now. Think yokone, think jicama, which is a lot more common for people to buy. Um, I mean, it's even in some smaller amounts in, well, I mean, I guess there's some in unripe bananas and mm -hmm. some garlic and onions and stuff, but not in any significant amounts. Um, so my microbiome test showed me what I needed to eat. And, you know, I want to enhance that. So anyways, I was at 750, 750. I made more changes. I got up to 850. And my last test that I just did a little bit earlier this year was up to 950. Is this out of 1,000? No, or no, no. So like, like it could be, I mean, I have friends that have like 1,100. Wow. So like, and so you see it going up. Oh, you, mine's so going you up. Can see with mine's the going up with my changes of eating some heat processed foods. Oh, crucify me, man. I ate some cooked foods. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm feeding bacteria now that I never fed before because I wasn't eating these foods because I eliminated them based on the, you know, the dogma that if it's cooked, it's bad. Yeah. Right. And do you feel a difference eating cooked? Like, do you, you look great. Do you feel a difference? Like, yeah. So, I mean, the honest thing is when I, for many years on my raw food diet, like I wouldn't be able to get to sleep at night so easily because I'd always be so wired, have so much energy. And I, I get it. Sometimes I don't I'm know like if that, that was too. a fruit sugar or what, or if it's just the vibing, high vibing foods or what. <laughs> but now that I eat some heat processed foods, man, I'm like, I'm out like a light. And you feel more grounded. So you feel like you maybe sleep better. Oh, I sleep way better, dude. Like way and better eating. Some, how's some your heat happiness? Do you dude. feel as happy on the cooked food as fully raw? I mean, I feel the same. I can't say I feel any different. Now, the other thing is like, this is like, this is a 28 year journey for me. So yeah. I haven't been, it's not like, you know, just like I was doing it two months and then I ate some cooked and I felt like shit. My body has <laughs> yeah. been attuned for like a long time. True. For eating all raw and even incorporating cooked food. Like back in the day, some people say you eat all raw, then you eat cooked food. You're going to be in the hospital because you're going to be sick because it's going to mess you up. And it's like, I don't know, man. Like for me, I have not found that to be true at all. I like your impressions. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. Okay, one more thing with the gut microbiome. Do you think if somebody was breastfed as a child and they didn't have things that necessarily compromised their gut microbiome as much as some of the rest of us, do you think then they could grow up and just maybe not eat so good and they still feel just as happy as maybe us eating a lot of plants to feed the microbiome and not maybe they don't have as many health problems because they had like long-term breastfeeding. They had these things. Do you think they're able to avoid the problems or at the end of the day, standard American diet will still destroy that gut? So, I mean, here's the thing. The breast milk will, and then also being vaginally birthed or, you know, and all these yeah. things, getting the proper, you know, bacteria to start with and then being breastfed is a good starting point. But then if you just go immediately to like processed junk foods, you will tank the microbiome. Mm -hmm. Like you will, it's going to go down. You're going to mess it up because you're not feeding the bacteria. So, and that's the whole thing. That's why a raw vegan diet or even just a whole food plant-based diet works because hopefully, I mean, from standard American or ultra processed foods, it's not feeding the microbiome because they're removing the fiber. Mm -hmm. They're adding lots of sugar. They're taking out polyphenols and antioxidants. that could also feed the microbiome. You know, in many cases, there's not a lot of resistant starch because it's the same three or five foods over and over again in different forms, that's going to mess up your microbiome. But then when you go raw, you're eating ho hopefully a whole bunch of different kinds of fruits, has different kinds of polyphenols. Hopefully you're eating also vegetables. Mm -hmm. And right there, 
that's enough to basically get a lot of people up to the point where a lot of your problems are going to go away, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And that's why we see so much healing with raw foods. But I know there's raw foodists out there that still have some a few annoying problems that they maybe they're not going to admit on camera or something's going on. And or maybe they could have a strong immune system, but they think they feel so good right now because raws work for me for yeah. so long. I'm going to be shut down and not look open to new things. Yeah. And so that's where I'm like, hey, let's look into new things. Maybe this is going to help me. Maybe it isn't. So far, I'm seeing it's going to help. It's helped me a lot. And do you think you would ever, what if you found, I don't know if you've seen information on this with including animal, I don't like to say animal products because I feel like animals aren't products, but including eating animals in your diet. Like if you thought that would include, like improve your microbiome, is that something you would do? Do you think you will ever go back to like eating fish or chicken or any animals or no? So what I will say is this, right? If you go on a high animal product diet, animal products do not feed your microbiome for the most part. Mm -hmm. What they'll do is they'll moderate your microbiome because you're not eating plants in their place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also the and eating animal products could negatively impact your microbiome because now you got the bad bacteria coming in with the animals. And feed parasites and stuff yeah, too, Yeah, so right? I mean, there's different kinds of bacteria in our guts. There's like commensal bacteria, um, you know, there's uh, good bacteria mm -hmm. and there's bad bacteria. So the commensals are basically, they could flip. Like you're hanging out with a good crowd at school that doesn't drink that like, you know, does their studying and gets good grades, you're going to get good grades. But then if you start hanging out with the bad crowd that, you know, parties and smokes, you know, stuff and drinks, then you're going to start doing that. Yeah. So, I mean, we have three different kinds of bacteria, bad bacteria. We don't want to have in us the commensals, right? Depending on who they're hanging out with, if they're hanging out with a lot of bad bacteria, they're going to shift bad. Mm -hmm. But if the commensals are hanging out with good bacteria, they're going to shift good. So like based on my diet for the last you know, many years, I have not a lot of bad bacteria, a lot less bad bacteria than some of my friends that have gotten their microbiome tested or even raw. So yeah. like, I'm happy about that. But some of my good bacteria, you know, I, that's what I need to improve. Okay. And what do you say if somebody says this is all nuts? This is just too much. Just live a little, have a glass of wine, eat a steak and eat, eat in balance. This is crazy. So yeah, I mean, yeah. So what I do is crazy. I'm not going to say <laughs> it too. isn't. Most people, you know, don't give a crap about their health. They'll just have, you know, I don't drink wine. I will drink, you know, grape juice, <laughs> eat grapes. Actually, I have been fermenting, which is a whole different thing. And having a fermented, um, you know, beverage, which I don't think it has any alcohol. I haven't gotten drunk off it yet, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's using it. I ferment it with a, with a beneficial yeast. So that's a, it's another probiotic food. You know, and I, I, I'm not going to be the vegan that tells you guys, and I don't even like the word vegan. I like to say I'm plant-based. Mm -hmm. What I'll say is I don't like to harm other animals for my food. And what I'll say is that there's, there's too much overconsumption of animal products. And honestly, from all my research, like you don't have to be vegan to be healthy you do have to be 90% vegan to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Because if you eat more than 10% of by animal products, that means you're not eating enough plant foods. And this, I'm talking whole, whole plant foods, raw or minimally processed. You know, I'm not just talking junk food. And I feel like it's out of control now. Like, I feel like people are eating animal foods like every meal all oh, the absolutely. time. Like, it's like, if you're going to eat it, I feel like eat it maybe a couple times a week. It should be a, a treat. Week. It should yeah. be a treat or like big salad with a few bits of chicken. Like, if the whole world went 90% vegan, I'd be totally happy because it's better than like 1% of, of, of the people in the world going 100% vegan. Yeah. And it's so much harder to digest, don't you think, when people eat that on the digestion? Like, do you notice a difference on your digestion when you like adopted a healthier lifestyle? I mean, I, I haven't eaten meat in like a lot of years. So like, I can't really even tell you about that. True. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm going to say that, you know, you challenge your digestion when you make changes, because mm -hmm. if you're used to eating McDonald's day in, day out for the last five years, then you eat, you even drink a juice. You're like, your digestion's tripping out because your micro, your microbes in your gut are used to you getting your meat, used to you getting your my, McDonald's. You're eating foods that feed those certain bacteria. Now, when you're bringing in another food, they're like, dude, wait a second. We don't digest fruits and vegetables. We don't even digest juice. That's why you got a stomach ache now. That's why you're getting diarrhea now because your microbiome is upset and pissed. No, but then a lot of times people will start eating the more plant foods from a diet like that. And then they'll be like, I'm bloated. My stomach hurts. This isn't working. And they leave it so fast, I feel like. So don't you think it's like the gut microbiome, it needs time to adjust a yeah, lot of times, right? Our bodies right? and our gut microbiome. So, I mean, of course, the thing to do, Jillian, is to start slow. 
Like, you know, I and some people like don't like this because I, I'm not I sell juicers. I'm the probably the number one juicer seller in the world, and I don't recommend long juice fasts. You don't, yeah. I don't. What Why? I would say is I would tell people to like, hey, if you're e- drink eating McDonald's day in, day out, or whatever you're eating, right? Continue to eat whatever you're eating, but have one juice in the morning. Mm-hmm. But do that for a month. And then slowly over time, right? get rid of one of the McDonald's me- meals or get rid of one of those fast food junk meals and eat an extra salad and then go from like a juice in the morning and then a salad and still have your McDonald's, your junk food at night. Yeah. And, but do it and transition slowly over time. So your body and your microbiome can adjust because I think if you do this, you're going to be successful in the long term instead of going f- cold Turkey a hundred days. And yeah, you, people can do that and they get amazing results. But the challenge I see with that is that you learn how to juice fast you don't learn how to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really important. And then, and then you fall off the wagon and you just go back to what you're doing because it's too hard and you finally lose the you know the motivation to do it. Yeah, so with juicing, you've been juicing for a really long time. 28 years. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, I wonder when the first juicer was even made, when people first started, you know? Yeah, like ancient like- times, they had a mortar and pestle <laughs> and you could filter through like some kind of banana leaf. <laughs> so what's like a juice, if someone was going to look to incorporate one juice every day, I know we're going to make one after, but like, what would you recommend? And to you, what are the benefits of adding in a juice? And like, how do you think it can change someone's life? So the one juice I would recommend, number one, is a vegetable juice, especially a leafy green vegetable juice, as much leafy greens as possible. Leafy greens are the most nutritious foods on the entire planet and unfortunately most undereaten foods on the entire planet as well. And people will be surprised to hear this, but I don't necessarily recommend juicing straight fruits. Eat your fruits, blend your fruits, right? Like, don't juice your fruits, guys. Like, I want you guys, because, you know, Fruits are easy to eat, right? They taste so good. You can put them in a smoothie. They're great. That way we're going to keep all the fiber, minimally minimally disturb some of the nutrients, hopefully you're vacuum blending instead of just traditionally blending it. But we want to juice the vegetables, especially leafy greens, because it makes the vegetables more digestible. I know some people in raw foods will say, you can't digest, you know, collard greens because it's too fibrous and you got to eat the tender baby greens. (laughs) <laughs> and like dude like i mean my garden was just in my garden harvest and stuff we're gonna juice in a little bit but i harvested all the outer leaves all the mature leaves and i mean if i'm picking a salad i'm picking all the baby tender leaves to eat but that's where the juicer comes in the juicer does what your your gut and your microbiome you know could do is basically it does some of that digestion for you it yeah. takes away some of the fiber keeps up the soluble fiber and makes it easier for you to digest so that you could get greater uptake in minerals and phytonutrients faster in your blood than you could by eating it. Yeah. And, and in a higher quantity. So, you know, you could easily juice one pound of collard greens and have one cup of collard green juice, which would taste rather strong. I'm not going to say it doesn't. But now you're getting one pound of greens in one cup. So instead of eating a whole pound of collard greens, which people do not eat collard green salads, but I could juice a whole <laughs> no, pound of collard greens and drink one cup even if you're just shooting it because you don't think it tastes good you're a character john then you're then you're going to get it in you and that's the whole thing i want to get in you i mean i want to get it in you (laughs) i want to get in you look out people are asking if you have a girlfriend (laughs) so that's a good transition we're gonna get into some of these viewers questions so what's the love life looking like people want to (laughs) know is there a girl The love life yeah so i'm currently dating it's you know i'm a a little bit challenging character because i'm different than the normal person (laughs) like i don't drink i don't watch sports i garden i make healthy food i make youtube videos i travel and so what does that look like do you go on the dating apps yeah no i go on the dating apps but like the thing is that like you know like like i would date somebody that's not like raw would you date somebody who's not vegan I would date somebody that's not vegan, but they need to be health oriented. Yeah. So in my opinion, if they're health oriented and if they're truly into their health, they should be eating 90% vegan. Yeah. So I could be all right with dating somebody that's not 100% vegan, but they have to be into their health and it has to be once again, 10% or less of animal products. And once we got to know each other better, right? And we were together, like we would be growing them ourselves. Yeah. And then they would have to, like, I would not do the play the part in slaughtering animals. No but if, way. But, if, but I believe that if somebody wants to eat animals, and this, this is why people, vegans might not like me. I think that people want to eat animals. They need to kill it themselves and go through the whole process because this opens your eyes to this, the pain and torture and suffering that, that animals go through. And if, you know, everybody that ate a, chicken have to kill the chicken right how many people would really kill a chicken to eat it 
It's crazy. Like you couldn't do it. Like I, I, my cousin, man, I met my co- many years ago. My cousin says the only reason why I eat meat, John, is because it looks just nice and you know clean in a package. It I'm like, doesn't you're even though, John. You're, it I don't. Doesn't. I don't. I don't agree I with her. I see it in a package at the grocery store. And I think it looks disgusting. I'm like, that looks nasty. It's just flesh, but that's what she told me. So I'm just. So, but but so many people are disconnected. I mean. And then even so, I mean, that's just with animal products. I want people to be connected with the food, with the plant foods you're eating. I mean, I grow my own food. I harvest food from my garden. I brought over some fajoas for you that I just harvested yesterday, literally. And I know what it takes to grow food. And so many people are just disconnected because they're getting industrial processed food, industrial raised food on big farms that they don't even know the process. And there's so much more life, right? When you pick it. Oh yeah. There's so much more life vibrancy. And I mean, you could control exactly how you grow it. So, I mean, I just want people to be connected with the food they eat, whether it's fruits and vegetables or whether it's animal products for sure. And don't you feel like you feel more connected to yourself and connected to the universe, connected to God? I don't know if you believe in God, but feel more connected, just more connected to your true self, like eating more plants and eating this way versus if you're eating a lot of animal products and processed food. Well, I can't. I don't eat processed food. And like I could see (laughs) being very disconnected of eight processed food and I don't eat any kind of meat. So, yeah, like I can't tell you what I think I would feel like because I it's been like many years. So, like, I don't even know. And thank God you found this path so young. Yeah. So, I mean, I just recommend that people eat a real food diet and mostly plants like M- michael Pollan said <laughs> yeah i love that okay i'm gonna get into more of yours questions just one more question of mine first any back to the dating any dating stories that you have to share lately i mean <clears throat> i don't really have any dating stories like really <laughs> okay. like it's just hard to find somebody that is just into e- he- healthy living or even you know true and it then is. also too like I want to have kids like that's the most like the most important criteria for a woman besides eating healthfully is do you want to have kids? And if they don't want to have kids like I need to move on because yeah. I want to have kids and that's a big priority in my life. So yeah. I have to find somebody that is into health and wants to have kids. Well, listen up, <laughs> ladies. This might be somebody out there. <laughs> yeah. I can start matchmaking. I've matchmaked a few. <laughs> I have done some matchmaking in my life and I'm proud to say there's a couple families with kids out there because I exist and oh, I wow. matchmake cool. them. Awesome. So maybe that'll be a little mission of mine on this All channel. Right. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So one of the questions, you guys are great. You have amazing questions. John loves his juicers and giving us insights. You do. Your discount juicers channel is amazing. I'll put it down below. And they want to know what made you pick this niche? Like the juicing niche. Oh, why did I start selling juicers back in the day? Yeah. Okay, that's an interesting story. So basically, back in the day when the internet was just starting, like in the mid-90s, like I made a raw food. I started eating raw in 95. I think around 97, I started my raw foods website called living-foods.com. And then I was like, I also did, I did web development back then. Mm -hmm. Like, because it was like, back then it was like way easy because there wasn't a lot to do. And but I was good at like, you know, programming HTML and most people can do that. And so when I had off time, I'm like, how? And I also at this point, I was like working on my own and I was saying I had my own business, but basically I was still living on credit cards. Yeah. (laughs) So I was like, how can I make some money, you know, doing what I love? And I found there was a local juicer distributor in the next city from me Hmm. called Albion. And actually they sold juicers wholesale. And then. I'm like, and then I was into juicing already because it, it changed my life so much. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, I could just sell juicers and sell them for a better price and then ship them to people. And I could make my own website to sell juicers. And then I could provide a service and get people out juicers so that they could be healthier. Yeah. And then when somebody buys a juicer from me, I don't have to put any money out because they're going to pay me the money. I'm going to take their money and then drive up to the, 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 you know, the wholesale place and buy it from them and then just take it to UPS and drop it off and I'll make some money Mm -hmm. and I could charge less than other places. And so that's how I got my start, my start. And look at you now. Yeah. And look at me now. So, I mean, now that, I mean, that's, that's been a long time ago. Now I just work directly with manufacturers and they, everybody knows me because. And we have the internet. Like, yeah, we have the internet. Yeah. So like, I mean, I wasn't, I mean, I started making videos before there was even YouTube on this thing called real streaming, which was like basically still pictures like strung together. (laughs) No uh, to like way. try to educate people about juicers and so some of my old discount juicer videos on youtube are just like those old real streaming videos that you could just see the stu- super choppy motion and me trying to t- 
talk about and demonstrate to users back then. Well, I love the story, and I feel like you've been really successful at following your passion, like in your purpose. You really follow what you're passionate about. Yeah, because right? I mean, this works for me, and I'm like, it it can help other people too. Yeah, and you've been successful, successful at social media, business, all these things. Any tips for somebody out there who might be like stuck in the corporate job they hate, or like they want to take that step and they want to like start YouTube or like start doing something they love like you, but they feel stuck. <clears throat> You know, I would say just you got to take the plunge. I mean, don't quit your job today and then just go straight to YouTube thinking you're going to be successful, you know, like Jillian is. But like I would say that like you have to set time aside to do it and be consistent on a regular and everyday basis and have a plan and make sure that your plan is a solid plan. And, and it's actually and then have ways that you know you're going to be able to generate revenue because at the end of the day, Unfortunately, in the society we live in, it all takes money to survive and, and to do everything we want to do. Exactly. I agree. And with the juicers, okay, we're both affiliates with Nama. I know you're not dedicated to one juicer. I love the Nama. I'll put both our codes down below. But since you're not just with one, like that's my favorite. What's your absolute favorite? Like if money was no object or like what's your go-to juicer? Well, my go-to juicer now, Jillian, is the Nama J2. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. The C2. The all-in-one. I use a C2 because it's taller and I could put like a five quart collection, you know, glass underneath it to catch five, up to five quarts. Now, I don't usually let it get to five quarts because it gets really heavy because the glass is already a big pitcher. So I usually let it get to four quarts. So this I could just batch juice and then I could evenly distribute it out when I batch juice and make like eight quarts or six quarts at a time. Mm -hmm, Makes mm -hmm. it easier so I don't have to keep stopping and then pouring out all the juice i'm making yeah i love it i love the all-in-one having the blender and stuff too yeah. yeah it's really good okay so somebody said i love the i love the raw lifestyle and find it well worth the effort but struggle with how time consuming it is cleaning the food the chopping the dishes etc mm -hmm. could you please ask john, ask john for tips on time management or hacks when preparing meals so i can be lazy thanks yeah so trust me i'm the laziest freaking guy you know <laughs> i mean back in the day when i got into raw foods i would do all this i, I don't want to say stupid food prep and stuff and dehydrate stuff and do all these fancy things and now i'm just like man i just need to eat i need to eat a diversity and get a good you know you know variety of foods in me so what i've really learned to do and you know i'm gonna say what i do is not optimal optimal is if i made every single meal and then you know if i went out to my garden picked it fresh made it made a salad dressings from scratch and then ate it like if i could do that every day mm -hmm. i mean I, I do everything myself i film videos for three channels i do gardening i do so many things and I, it's just to do that one extra thing I, i'm just not there because i don't have a partner to help me out and do this so mm -hmm. what i do jillian is i do batch food prep so i mean i think that is a game changer now i mean yes if i did it every day that'd be better but I could batch prep, like I'll usually batch prep a big salad. Mm -hmm. So I just go around my garden, pick a lot of greens for salad, maybe buy a few organic ingredients from the store to chop that up. And then I'll, you know, shred up things and make a big salad and I'll make a big dressing and pour it over the salad. And I'll make like, could be about four to five quarts of salad. Wow. In one huge bowl. And I have Instagram pictures showing the big things I'll make. And my favorite is actually this, the raw soup I make. Wow. Because that's even more nutritious than a salad, in my opinion. And I have videos on how to, I make my raw soup. And that I'll make like sometimes up to eight quarts in one big batch. And then I vacuum seal them in mason jars. I store them cold in my fridge. And, you know, for sure, for like the next four days, they'll be fine. Some, in, some, in some instances, depending on how I made it and the day and the temperature, they'll spontaneously ferment. <laughs> and they'll actually just the, the vacuum lid will pop off because now it's getting carbonated because of the lactobacillus bacteria mm -hmm. but then now, now i have a i have a probiotic rich soup <laughs> which i don't necessarily particularly care for the flavor when it's overly fermented so yeah yeah i love that and what's your favorite salad dressing i mean my salad dressing it, it just varies because it like people don't understand like i everybody always wants what's the one recipe you like the most john or what's the one favorite salad dressing and like to me it changes every time of the year because my favorite salad dressing is me using the seasonal local ingredients that I buy mm -hmm. on a weekly basis or what's in season, you know, whether like today, earlier I was at like local farms picking up produce. And so I got like Asian pears, pomegranates or predominantly. Mm -hmm. And so I could like make a pomegranate dressing because I got pomegranates this week. You know, I yeah. got some sugar cane, 
sugarcane's in season now. You could buy sugarcane. I have a sugarcane juicer, so I could juice sugarcane and then put some pomegranates in there, blend that up with some nuts and seeds, and maybe a little bit of miso mm-hmm. and some garlic or whatever. Yeah. And so it's like I just make things seasonally. So like I don't want to say I don't have a one go to, and I always encourage you guys, and I always try to you know, shift my nuts. So I shift my nuts. (laughs) So like for the longest time, I would always use macadamia nuts because like they're my favorite fattiest, creamiest nut. They're right there in the kitchen. Yeah. And they're like, and I would avoid cashews because I thought they were bad. And so I'd use like cashew or macadamia nut dominant dressings. And like looking back at that, that was like a really big error on my part because some days you want to do a mac dressing. Some days you want to do cashew dressing. Some days you want to do a pecan based dressing. Some days you want to do a sesame dressing. You always want to shift up your nuts and use different kinds of nuts because they have different nutrients, nutrient profiles, and also different kinds of fibers yeah. for a gut microbiome. I agree. And I forget if I said this, but we're going to make John's favorite juice at the end of this video. I might have said it already. Sorry, guys, I forget. But okay, one thing with Las Vegas, too, you were saying like it's difficult to grow food here. Right. So why do you live in Las Vegas? Have you ever considered we since you're all about gardening and growing your food? Have you considered relocating to an area that would make it easier? Sure. So like so I will say most people think it's really difficult to grow food in Vegas. Yeah. I'm not going to say that because I I figured out how to do it. And I, I mean, I've yeah, I've, I've made it happen. Yeah. So what I'll say is that, like, I did move from somewhere northern California where it's way easier to grow food. Mm-hmm. Actually, I just came back from my California property yesterday last night. And I brought 100 pounds of food with me on the airplane <laughs> and three checked in bags, um, which is kind Hope of... Hope you didn't fly Flair. We flew Flair. I had to pay no, 600 no. bucks for our bags. <laughs> oh, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, right? no, I flew Southwest. So I got two bags for free, check in, and then I carried a big bag to the gate. And they're like, you have too much stuff because I had like a big bag of like probably about 40 pounds of fruit. And then I had some cherry tomatoes and another bag hanging in my backpack with like all my gear. And they're like, because I had three things as I'm going on the plane. They're like, you got too many things. And I'm like, well, I can't check in my tomatoes because they're all going to break and stuff. And then they're like, they just took that bag and checked it too. They're like, who is this guy? I can't yeah. check in my tomatoes. <laughs> I can't check in. Yeah, don't crush my tomatoes. Or Yeah, anyways. See, it's good domestic because you can bring whatever you want, right? When I fly from Canada, they're like, any fruits and vegetables? Yeah, you can't. Get you out can't, of here. Yeah, so like if you're inside the United States, you know, you could you could take whatever you want. Like, yeah. Between, but nonetheless, so like Northern California, it's so easy to grow stuff, like way easier than Vegas. Cool. Wow. But I mean, I moved to Vegas because of the tax purposes, mainly. Yeah, that's why. So thought. there's like l- there's no state income tax here, unlike California. And California has been just regulates you to heck, man. That's there's what, like yeah. so many laws and all these things that I'm just not a big fan of anymore. So like my income went up when I moved to Las Vegas. And the other thing that I really love about Las Vegas is the weather. So like mm-hmm. I personally hate the rain. Like that's, that's weird. I mean, I know people love the rain and my plants love the rain, <laughs> but I hate the rain because then I, I don't like to garden in the rain. It's just uncomfortable and all this stuff. And I don't like singing in the rain. I don't really sing, <laughs> but like, <laughs> but I hate the rain. So like, this is one of the places in the country that rains the least. Yeah. And the other thing I like Jillian is that even in the winter time, it'll be cold outside. Not as cold as Toronto no. where you're from. But it'll still be sunny. It'll be sunny out and it's cold. So I'll still get the sun rays instead of like, you think Seattle, you think overcast all year, barely gets any sun. I, I need sun, man. And I hate <laughs> rain. And so, yeah, Vegas. And I, the weather's fine. I mean, I've, I've grown accustomed to 100 plus degree weather and I kind of like the 100 plus better than like you know th- this, this time of year where we're getting into 50s you know and 40s in the days yeah i like it here though it's a good vibe yeah no it's it's a good vibe what are yeah. things you as a raw vegan as somebody who's so health conscious do you have things you do in vegas like do you ever go to the casinos or like walk on the strip <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so like yeah I, I barely ever come down to the strip i don't gamble um i don't drink I don't go to nightclubs, like all the normal things that people come here to do. Like I don't do, I don't watch sports. Me too, but I used to go to the nightclubs. Like yeah, we were all like, about bottle really, service strip clubs. Like I, really, I was, I drank, it was a mess, but you never drank. No, really. I, don't, I don't, I stopped drinking at 21, Jillian. But I mean, the one thing I do do is um, I go to shows sometimes on the strip. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. I have this thing called house seats where I can get free show tickets to some certain shows Mm -hmm. and then I'll just come see a show on the strip. And that's that's, that's about my extent of using the Vegas amenities. I like it here. But I do like the national parks in the area, you know, Lake Mead. There's like the Valley of Fire and like I I live near Red Rock. Okay, cool. The canyon. So like I go up there and hike like with my dog all the time. 
I love that. Yeah, because we're on the strip, and I want to go out and see some of the nature. Because when I see it in people's Instagram and stuff, it just looks absolutely unbelievable. Okay, and your dog you brought up. Somebody was asking. They were telling me. Shout out Crystal Dawn Culinary, one of the best raw food chefs in the game. She does the raw desserts and stuff. I don't know if you know her. She was telling me she wants to know more about your dog. Other people were too. I saw a post and it was really inspiring. And I've actually, I travel a lot and I thought getting a dog is a lot of work with my kids. And, but I'm going to say like your post really inspired me to reconsider. And then the same day my kids were saying, can we please get a dog? And I actually thought about your post and I was like, maybe they were like, what? So like it's changed your life. You feel happier having that companion. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a buddy I always have around. Yeah. So, I mean, I think everybody should adopt. So, like, he was basically, uh, like, uh, like not necessarily abandoned, but, like, he was surrendered because the mama couldn't couldn't keep him because, I guess, the mom and the dad, like, had three dogs, and they had two big dogs and him, mm -hmm. and then they broke up, and then she couldn't take care of him anymore because it was too much work with two big dogs and him mm -hmm. because, I guess, the, the, the boyfriend or whatever would walk the two big dogs, and she would walk the small dog. And she just couldn't even do it anymore. So mm -hmm. then basically, so he's kind of like a rescue. I would encourage people to visit their local animal shelter and, you know, find an animal. Because in, in some places around the world, in the country anyways, they still euthanize pets that can't get adopted, which I think is quite sad. That's crazy. That's and, so sad. Yeah, that's so sad. So and then plus, I mean, you could provide love. He could provide love or she. Um, you know, they're great for kids. They're great for your microbiome because now they're bringing in <laughs> dust and dirt from outside. And, you know, there's mm -hmm. somebody to love on. And, yeah, there, there's just so fulfilling to have a little partner, especially if you're single. Yeah. I mean, maybe you got a partner, not so much. But, like, but also, too, it could bring people together. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could also push people apart because, like, somebody wants to, the dog in the, <laughs> bed, the bed at night when you're sleeping and some people don't. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised <laughs> they're really good for the microbiome, having a dog. Oh, absolutely. No, there's published studies on dogs enhancing your microbiome. Absolutely. Wow. What's your dog's name? Oakley. His name's Oakley. He's a miniature pincher and he's uh, 12 years old now. The sunglasses? No, he's just, <laughs> I didn't he, think so. No, he's just Oakley because that's <laughs> that's his former name, and I just never oh, changed. Oh yeah, yeah, nice, awesome. Okay, somebody said discuss with John what he has incorporated in cooked food into his daily diet and what that has done for his benefits slash health. Sure. So I mean, I have videos where I discuss in detail the specific foods I've incorporated into my diet, and the first thing I'll say is I don't just go out and eat in any vegan crap restaurant. Actually, the matter of fact is I still don't eat out at any restaurants unless it's a raw food restaurant on rare occasion. The next thing I'll say is I'll still stay as a raw vegan. My stove is still disconnected in my house. It is not connected. It's used for storage and a whole bunch of stuff is piled on top of it. So the only way I heat process my food, and this is very important, is I only use an instant pot to cook my food. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I cook it in water, so it does the least amount of harm and toxin creation. So like when you fry stuff, when you air bake, when you do all these deep frying or barbecue air fry right? barbecuing could create toxins in your food. And that's one of the reasons why I eat raw to not create toxins in my food. But if you heat process food gently, which I'll say gently, right in an instant pot or just boiling or steaming, you're not going to create the negative effects of the cooked food, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially with leukocytosis and that really what, 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 what motivated me back in the early days to stay all raw, because I learned that, this leukocytosis would happen if you ate anything cooked is what I originally learned. And I know some people still say this in the raw food movement. If you eat anything cooked, it basically activates your immune system. Your white blood cell count goes up. And that's basically the boy who cried wolf because we shouldn't be reacting to cooked foods when we eat it because it's, it's trying to nourish us. But what, I did lear what I've learned since many years ago is that it's only animal foods that are, have foreign proteins will cause a leukocytosis even the worst cooked vegan food will not cause a leukocytosis wow which you know which was why I, I, I opening to me and was one of the reasons why i really was h hardcore raw mm -hmm. in the beginning years and then when i learned that i didn't really just jump on the ship to start eating cooks because i'm like ah, i still don't need cooked stuff mm -hmm. but then learning that plus then also later on with the microbiome and how being able to include more foods that i was not eating that could benefit me to have a greater diversity in my diet. So, you know, so the things that I do eat, Jillian, besides heating them in the, only the instant pot, so not creating toxins, and also some people in raw foods will say, when you cook stuff, you only lower nutrients. Nutrients could never be higher. So I have videos where I show published studies that, you know, some nutrients are more bioavailable mm -hmm. when you heat process them, uh, you know, and when we eat them. So that's not always true. Now, yes, we lose all the enzymes, so I'm not going to say... 
you're keeping enzymes when you're heat processing food. You are also, you know, removing the life force. So I'm not going to say that either. You know, so I still eat plenty of raw, 80 to 90%, depending on the time, depending on the day is still raw for me. Absolutely. But I do include 10 to 20% of certain heat processed foods, right? And these are the ones that could give me more benefits. So for example, some of the heat processed foods I will eat, mushrooms. I don't necessarily recommend eating mushrooms raw. Mushrooms are a superfood, help you build your immune system. They also contain chitin, uh, which can also feed our microbiome. And, you know, there's so many studies on the beta glucans and the mushrooms mm -hmm. and how it could help you in so many ways. So I do mushrooms. And that's basically a zero calorie food, I'm going to mm -hmm. say. Another thing I really love is artichokes. So just the standard artichokes. I'll steam those in the instant pot under pressure. And that has the, um, you know, good microbiome mm -hmm. uh, benefits for us, for the, for the fibers. Also, it's one of the highest antioxidant vegetables out there. Even mm -hmm. if it's cooked, it's still super high antioxidant. Kicks ass over a lot of different vegetables. Other things I eat include beans. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, some raw foodists could sprout lentils and chickpeas. Not too many other beans could be sprouted and eaten. They might make you really sick or kill you, mm -hmm. such as kidney beans. But when you start heating beans, now you, you, you could eat a lot more food. So my goal these days is to not pile in the fruit because I know a lot of people on raw food diet are fruit-based and, hey, if it's working for you, go for it. But I learned for me and what I'm doing, eating high fruit was not working for my microbiome or for how I was feeling in terms of like some blood sugar, you know, testing that I did hmm. in the past. So then I could now eat, still eat fruit. Fruit's still wonderful. Eat less fruit and then eat some beans in its place. Or I also will basically uh, cook or in the instant pot, I'll steam the purple potatoes and purple sweet potatoes. Those are good. I don't generally like to do the standard orange sweet potatoes unless it's some rare situation. Or I, I really, really rarely, if ever, cook russets because mm -hmm. they're, they're going to negatively impact your blood sugar, whereas purple potatoes will actually cause your blood sugar to go the other direction. Purple potatoes are good. I used to eat those. I think I saw something on Dan. I forget how to pronounce his Uter. name. But yeah, I think he posted something recently about that, right? How in the longest living blue zone. Yeah, so the Okinawan. So that's what the other thing I'm looking at that I don't think a lot of raw vegans like consider, Jillian, is yeah. like, you know, what? why do you eat raw foods? Like, what do you want out of it? Do you want the best health? Do you want to live long? Maybe you just want to like run ultra marathons and, and you know, just eat high fruit and that's great. But for me, I want to be have the best immune system, you know, live healthy, and more importantly, have a nice long life. And, yeah. you know, blue zones, of course, a lot of them are starch based diets. They mm -hmm. don't eat. They're not all vegan or anything, but they eat high starch. And in Okinawa in Japan, they eat the purple sweet potatoes. It's one of their the longevity foods of the centenarians. Mm -hmm. You know, how many raw vegans do you know that live to 100? Like I know a lot of raw vegans and they didn't really live much longer than average people so you know if you don't want to live to 100 <laughs> that's up to you <laughs> and have you ever considered trying the blue zones diet or no so like i'm not going to eat a blue zones diet because i believe a blue zone diet could be improved on yeah and that's what i'm doing that's yeah. why I'm, I'm eating how i eat so i eat foods that are eaten in blue zones but also take my spin on you know what if a blue zone ate the blue zone and then dial it in and even ate more raw food or even juice to uptake higher levels of nutrients or even freeze dry the food to up their levels of some of the different nutrients in there so they, they could, you know, just supercharge their nutrition. Mm -hmm. like, I love they're it. Not, they're, not, they're not thinking about these things. They're just living their lives. Uh, do you have a book? No, I need to have a book. Yeah, I, you all need my a book. information With is. With all this information, all this science, all this information. All my information is free on my YouTube channel. Yeah, right? I'll link and that's those very books. important to me to have free information because, like, I was given a second chance at life. And when I, one of the promises I made in the hospital when I didn't walk out, when I wasn't going to make it alive, I'm like, you know, God or higher powers, let me be here and give me a reason to be here. And I'm going to, I'm going to help spread what I've learned to help others because I'm like, what do we really have? Like, even if I want to make a million dollars and make all this money and stuff, what good would that do society? What good would that do people? Mm -hmm. I mean, especially what would good would it do me if I was in the hospital, but you know, learning what I've learned, having to go through the school of hard knocks and being able to share this with others is, is, brings me great joy, Julian. Yeah. Because I know I was put here, given a second chance for a reason to share this message with others, you know, so that they could, you know, learn through my mistakes and learn through my trials and tribulations and, you know, get healthy because of it. And I can make a difference in the world. Yeah. I was, and you are. And Thank when you. you first went raw, do you remember, like for me, when I first went raw, I, it was a huge difference in how I felt. 
Like I felt like a different person right away and I felt amazing literally by the end of the first day. Like I had transitions started to get healthier before that. But the day I went raw, I was like, it totally changed my life and how I felt. Like, was it like that for you? Because I know with a lot of people, it's not like that. Did you notice a big difference in like how you felt when you first tried it and first started? Or do you not even remember? Because it was back so long a long ago. long time. So yeah, I really... It's so long ago. You know, I, I could say I felt different. Is it Was it a major difference? I, I couldn't tell you because it was a long time ago. And I'm yeah. not like, I didn't write diaries or <laughs> keep logs or all these you things. You didn't? No, okay. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Somebody's asking, do you take digestive enzymes? And if so, how long have you been doing that and what brand? Do you? I'm not sure. I do. Yeah. So I do take digestive enzymes, especially when I eat the heat processed foods, mm -hmm. usually at night. Okay. And the brand I take, um, let me see here. It's just some capsules I get. I don't know. I don't know the yeah. brand offhand. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, yeah, I wasn't sure if you took them. And somebody said, maybe you can ask about the pesticide facts. He recently was speaking on that on his channel. Mm. About pesticides? Yeah, sure. So what, what do you want to know? They Anything that comes to mind. Like anything see, sure. that people right. should know when they're shopping for produce or yeah, things? Yeah, sure. So I, I did make recently a video on uh, why raw vegans, especially fruitarians, especially if you're not eating, if you're not eating organic only, you're eating the most pesticides that even over standard American eaters, which was surprising to me. So like the USDA, the government agency that regulates pesticides basically came out with a report because they test all the different, you know, domestic and import, not all of them, but a sampling of domestic and imported crops to see, um, you know, how much pesticide residue is in there, you know, in the legal limits and then also out of bounds and too much. And also they check for what didn't have residue. So that was very interesting. So the, the eye opening thing for me was that domestic fruits, right, had the most pesticide residue out of grains, out of vegetables, out of everything. Wow. And the other thing is they'll tell you the top three or they'll tell you the whole list of pesticides ranked in order of which ones were found the most. Mm -hmm. And some of the most the ones that were found the most, one of them was a systemic pesticide, which means you cannot wash it off because it's inside it goes in the fruit and vegetable so that when the bug eats it, the bug's eating the pesticide because it's in the fruit. You can't wash it off. And think what that does to the body then too, right? Right. So like in my opinion, it's says long-term exposure of the pesticides that can bioaccumulate, right? That's why they say don't eat meat because the meat is eating all the pesticides and then the meat accumulates it in the animal and then we eat the meat and then you get a double dose of the pesticides or, you know, there's recent other, I didn't really cover this yet, but there's the PFAS, you know that never break down and in, and in, in, in it, it, they say it's coming from water and but the other thing is it's coming from animal products because animals concentrate these you know toxins um but we could concentrate them also so i want you guys out there to minimize your risk right and according to this and i go over the ways mm. to do that in my video but basically it was shown that in general right um if you eat more vegetables you're gonna have less pesticide residue right of mm -hmm. course you want to yeah. follow the dirty dozen and clean 15 i go into i go deeper than the dirty dozen and clean 15 which many people are already into mm -hmm. because they take data from many years but like this was really interesting because you could see the ones that really had a lot of residue wow like domestic and Im imported so like cilantro comes to mind like don't eat cilantro unless it's organic in my opinion based on the studies because it had a lot of violations and was pretty much known to have residues the other thing i will say is that I encourage you guys always, if you guys can afford it and can find it, to purchase organic um, or at least go out to your local farms that grow it and ask them how they grow it. If you're spraying stuff on it, um, you know, and buy things that are not sprayed with pesticides, even if they're using conventional fertilizer, that's better than buying something from an industry that is not there to grow you healthy food. The industry is there to make a profit. Yeah. Right. And so that's why, I mean, also, if you guys can, Grow your own food. That's why I teach gardening. My gardening channel is my biggest of my three YouTube channels. I think you have like a million subscribers, right? Almost. Almost. It's 910 or something. That's awesome. But like grow your own food so that you know exactly like I, I, nothing was sprayed on the collard. No pesticides were sprayed on the collard greens that I picked. No pesticides were sprayed on the fajoas that I brought over for you. You know, so I, everything that I grow, I know exactly what was put on because I did it. And more importantly than just the pesticides, I could add things to the soil that, you know, the industrial system for profit is not adding because it's too expensive. They don't see the need. It's not going to make, you know, it's going to make the food more nutritious, but then cost them more money and they don't get paid on how nutritious the food is. They just get paid on the poundage. So their goal is to make things as big as possible and bigger is not always better ladies. Yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> I love it. And yeah, who knows what these pesticides can do for us, especially us raw vegans eating all this produce. Like exactly. long term, imagine like That's on our thing. nervous system or exactly. I don't know. Like I, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but like cancer, strokes, like all these things, like Alzheimer's, you never know, right? Chronic diseases is related to pesticides. Wow. So like, do you always eat organic? Like, would you compromise if there was? Yeah. So like, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm perfect. I'm not. The world's not perfect. I can't source only organic food. Like, mm -hmm. absolutely. So like, for example, I was at a farmer's market on Saturday in San Francisco and there's a persimmon. I tasted all the persimmons and went around and found the booth that had the best tasting ones because generally the better tasting ones have more nutrition. And I asked him, you know, I want to know your growing practices. Like, what do you do? You spray anything on the crops and like, oh, we don't spray anything on the crops and we use manure for fertilizer. Hmm. So like mm -hmm. it wasn't certified organic, but yeah. I bought it. So the other thing I'll say is that like in general, like I only buy organic foods in mm -hmm. general with few exceptions so the exceptions are like if it's on the clean 15 and dirty dozen mm -hmm. then i will buy something not organic so mm -hmm. for example today i got organic apples and pineapples so pineapples are on the clean 15 list yeah so i mean it'll be a few things like that and then i'll usually you know cut off the skin because i'm going to use them for juicing i don't generally eat like pineapples that i'm buying in the store that are imported because they just burn the heck out of my mouth because they're not even that ripe yeah. So like if it's on the clean 15 list, I'll gen generally buy it non-organic or if it's something that's really rare that I'm not going to eat if I don't if I don't buy it conventional. So, for example, jackfruit, unless you grow your own jackfruit or live with an organic farm near you or know somebody, you're not going to get organic jackfruit. I've so you never got to get <laughs> yeah. conventional jackfruit. So then, you know, I mean that I just wash it off and eat it. So so I do the best I can. And then, of course, my my goals are to eat mostly of what i grew mm -hmm. so first for meals i'm going to eat what i grew if i don't have anything then i'll you know source from local farms that i trust their growing practices after mm -hmm. that i'll get organic produce after that i'll get you know the clean 15 conventional produce but certain things i just won't even eat if like it's conventional. strawberries right like if it's not organic strawberries i'm not going to buy it and even these days unless it's a super good deal on organic strawberries like i'm so picky with strawberries like i don't even like to buy them unless they're from the farmer's market because they're just they're just always hard. They're never yeah. picked ripe. You know, I mean, they're just not that good. I think they, I saw they have like 22 different pesticides if they're they've yeah, tested so like, to have that if they're conventional. Yeah. So like, I mean, there's certain things that you really you should avoid. I mean, cilantro and berries, I would I didn't say. I did realize about cilantro that it was that heavy. Yeah. No, cilantro was surprising. So yeah, that's what I show in, huh. the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the video I made. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And somebody said, how old is he now? But I'm not sure if you're willing to share. <laughs> so for privacy reasons, because my brother had identity <laughs> theft it. and all these things. He and like, did? Yes, wow. He did. And it was really bad. So like, for, you know, identity theft, I, I uh, you know, declined to state. I get it. <laughs> Speaking of identity theft, somebody stole my credit card a couple of weeks ago and they went to a hotel in Toronto. I was looking at my thing. I was like, why is the ba balance 5000 I have not spent that this week on my credit card. They went to a Hyatt hotel in Toronto and they spend thousands. Wow. I don't know how they got my card. What is going on these days, right? Yeah, Luckily, just gotta be careful out there. My bank reversed it right away. And the hotel said it was a guy and two girls. And they totally trashed the room. I'm like, what's wrong with people? How do you do that, right? How do you live with yourself? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, somebody said the best native healing herbs and fruit. Best native? So yeah. like what, grown in the U.S.? Or like I don't know. Native to the U.S.? Herbs and fruit? Yeah, for healing. I mean... Like, I don't really like, like, generalities. Like, you know, yeah. this is the best fruit. Eat oranges because they're going to heal everything. Like, I, I don't know. What do you need, man? Like, what I'm going to say is this. What I know is true is the most healing fruits and vegetables you guys need are the ones you're not eating because every fruit and vegetable has different kinds of fiber, different kinds of phytonutrients. It's going to have a different effect on your body, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you're eating, you know, bananas, dates, and romaine lettuce, like, every single day, but you're never eating pahoas or hot peppers or blueberries or wild blueberries or cherries you're not getting the benefits from those items mm -hmm. you know there's many different kinds of edible weeds which i encourage people, people to get into edible weeds and harvest wild forage weeds and things because they're even more nutritious than standard vegetables and you know you could go out to a forest and find some edibles that you know are not even around carbs or never sprayed with anything so i mean that's a, that's a great thing to do is to eat wild foods my goal is to like harvest wild seeds out from nature and then bring it back into my garden so now I could grow these wild foods in my garden in the best soil because 
when you're just out in nature, you'll think, oh, nature has the best soil. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nature has way better soil than a lot of places, but I could even dial it and make it better mm -hmm. by growing in my garden when I could specifically add certain things in my soil. Yeah. That's awesome. You're doing that. Life changing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, the next question, it's a question and then two replies that I'm going to read. <laughs> Because it's kind of funny. They're defending you. But my question for him would be, honestly, why he doesn't edit his videos. And then we have a reply. Why don't you work as hard as he does? <laughs> Which I thought was kind of funny. And the next reply is, have you seen all his videos? He's the only one I know of so diligent he, that he timestamps every single video. Oh, you do? Wow. I do. So that the viewer can drop right on a specific subject. Wow, that's good. I got to start doing that. Good for you. Okay, so here's <laughs> the thing. So, like, I guess in editing my videos, like, the first half of my channel, like, when I started my channel, well, maybe not even the first half now, but maybe the first third of my videos, I would always edit my videos myself. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I have an editor that does it for me, but my stance on editing is that I like to minimally edit my videos. Yeah, that's good. And the reason why I minimally edit my videos is because I feel that if I edit it down, then I'm censoring myself on what I think people should be hearing. True. And in a 30 second TikTok video or one minute TikTok video, whatever they allow, you're only getting a small clip and a small clip, you're never gonna learn the world's knowledge in 30 seconds. I know you guys want to as much as you know, and you guys want the one best food to eat, John, and I'm just gonna not eat anything else because it's gonna heal all my ails. If I say sunchokes is it and just eat sunchokes and <laughs> nothing else, you're probably gonna have so many farts and nobody's gonna wanna be around you. <laughs> but like, so like, I, I really just wanna give all the information. And like, I think that if I left something out, it might be something important that that one person needs that could change their life. True. Right? And especially when I do juicing, you know, comparisons, my juicing comparisons are 45 minutes or an hour. But I think that, you know, hey, it's, it's great that you have shorter video comparisons and other people have shorter comparisons. And people want to hear a short comparison and just learn the basics. I go into the depth so that you could determine, hey, I like this about this juicer. I like this about this because I'm going to share with you guys everything about it. Or whether it's in a gardening video, you know, I'm going to go into the, into the depths and like really hold your hand to help lead you and get you to kind of see how I'm thinking, how I'm feeling about things so that you'll know the information so that you can make an appropriate choice and having the proper information instead of just li like leaving out information because yeah. I find everything is so nuanced. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense. And one thing is kind of what you're talking about, but I have to ask people love the anti-aging topic on this channel. They love to look good. They love to feel good. So I saw you have a video about science, top foods for anti-aging for science, but I haven't seen that video. Any foods you want to share if there are foods that you think are anti-aging or no? So sure. So on that <laughs> video, I'm going to say that I looked up published scientific studies on foods that are anti-aging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so basically what they're going to correlate in there is foods that are high in antioxidant content are anti-aging. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wouldn't say that, I don't know, apples are an anti-aging food necessarily mm -hmm. compared to blueberries. Okay. But what I would say is the anti-aging food, it, it depends, right? It's com it compared to what? Hey, would I rather eat, what's more anti-aging? Apples? <laughs> I got organic Fuji apples today. Or Saltine crackers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. No brainer. Apples are more anti-aging than saltine crackers. But what's more anti-aging? Wild Canadian blueberries, mm -hmm. pesticide-free, or apples, mm -hmm. organic apples. The blueberries. The blueberries. You know, what's more anti-aging? Wild blueberries or dehydrated cloves? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dehydrated cloves. They're way higher antioxidants. I mean, any different spice? Because in, 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 in that video, basically, what I went over is a lot of the different spices that most people don't use, unfortunately, right, are highly mm -hmm. anti-aging wow. because they have a lot of different antioxidants. And antioxidants, we think, oh, they're going to anti-age us and not oxidize us. But the issue is those antioxidants or the properties of the micronutrients in the food will feed our microbiomes. And then they're, they're our partners in anti-aging, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to help us, you know, foods high in vitamin C, like bell peppers is my favorite, right, has vitamin C. So it's going to be like, you know, help us make collagen mm -hmm. so we won't wrinkle up, right? Yeah. And we want to have these foods because, I mean, we're just living. I mean, if you're smoking, you're going to get, like, wrinkles, extra wrinkles in your face, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's oxidizing you. So we want to eat the antioxidant food. So those are the foods that are most – Okay. That's basically the summary of that video. So eat high antioxidant food. So purple potatoes instead of rust potatoes. Choose purple rice instead of white rice. This is the way I eat myself, right? Choose – you know, deeper color, choose red app, red flesh apples instead of standard flesh apples. I have a video on red flesh apples on my channel. They're available right now this season. You what, know? instead of green apples or something? The red? No, red so flesh. So when you cut it open, the apple is usually like, you know, they think it's cream color or whatever, mm -hmm. white. 
oh. these apples when you cut them open they're like red or pink on oh the wow way more nutritious than people don't really know about these i things. don't think i've ever had one of those yeah so they actually, they're available at sprouts right now they're in season oh cool so they're called the what is it rose glow and well you're taking in a lot of antioxidants because you look good yeah, i know so we like, don't know your age but i think a lot of us kind of have like ideas about it around the yeah, internet so my goal is to eat a high antioxidant rich diet and yeah. high micronutrient diet which not a lot of people in raw foods really focus on. They just eat on focus on eating raw, focus on eating a lot of fruits. That's but smart, like, actually, now that you say that. You know, so yeah. like I would rather eat persimmons, which are, I would say, higher antioxidant than a banana, for example. I love persimmons. Yeah. They're Before in, I came to Las Vegas, right now, yeah. I bought so many persimmons, so I'm just waiting for them to ripen. They have to be really squishy to eat, though, Depends right? which ones. Okay. There's many different varieties. Okay, I thought so they the just common high chia variety that looks like an <clears> acorn that needs to be super soft. But then they have the flat kind, which are fuyus, which you could totally eat hard. Oh, okay. Those are the ones I have yeah. at home. They're more... Okay. Right. Good to know. And the other thing I'll say, Jalen, real quick is that like I have a video where I actually compare the nutrients in bananas to carrot juice. And it's like why I would rather drink carrot juice instead of eat bananas because it's much higher in antioxidants and it could be about pretty much the same calories. No way. Wow. So you're going to get so much more nutrition, especially the beta carotene. You know, then, you gotta do then a book. bananas. Okay, wow. I know you have a video that has a lot of views about 12 foods. People, I don't, okay, excuse me if I'm wrong about the title, but 12 foods raw vegans should avoid or 12 foods <laughs> raw <laughs> vegans <laughs> should never eat. It's from a long time ago with right. a lot of no, like you guys OGs, but it's really good. I remember it. I, before, right when I went raw, I watched that video. So, are there any foods that like you absolutely avoid? Like you never eat cacao, you never eat onions, you never eat unripe fruit. Anything? So, you know, so. Like when I made that video, I was kind of more in that mindset where there's things that are bad. Now, knowing what I know now, I would almost like, I mean, that, that video mm. is kind of like, you know, me at that point in time. So I want all you guys always to look at my current videos because my thoughts and things change over time. So nowadays, I would say that I don't like generalities for each person mm -hmm. or for overall. So like never eat garlic. I mean, I have friends that don't eat garlic and onions because it's bad for their yogic practice and all these things. And yeah, you know, that's, that's fine with them. Like for me, my goal is to increase the diversity and not say any food is bad. We should respect foods and have them in context. So like, I would say that eating cacao beans every single day, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, I don't know, two cups every single day is bad. Even one cup a day is bad, right? Mm -hmm. Eating one bean every day, I mean, that, that could be all right, but I would, you know, I would want to vary it. So, um, you know, I think that if you eat too much of any one thing, that's limit, that's going to lessen you on how much of the other things you could eat. Yeah. Right. So my goal is to get it at diversity. And the other thing is that like for you out there, one food may be really bad for you, but not, who am I to say what it is? Like, I want you guys to get your microbiome checked because if you get a microbiome check, they will tell you what is bad for you based on your gut bacteria. You have an overgrowth of this bacteria, so you should no longer be eating bananas and instead eat kiwis. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm going to tell people. If they want to know what's good or bad for them, get a microbiome test because they'll tell you, eat more of this, eat less of this, and that's based on improving your microbiome based on the current science. Yeah, and can you eat cacao and still feel good? Like for me, it's such a stimulant. I wish I could have cacao. I get so stimulated from it and then I come down. Is that you think my gut microbiome still needs work or do you think that it's just a stimulant and it affects you that way too? So I, I've gone through different rationales with cacao over the years. Yeah. So at first when it came out, because I was one of the first people that learned about raw cacao because a long time ago there was no, when I started raw foods, there was no such thing as raw cacao. It wasn't yeah. even a thing. Wow. And I saw it at a trade show. I'm like, oh, what's that? And like, then they started selling it and yeah. all this kind of stuff. And I think Jeremy Saffron was another guy back in the day who was really into that. Yeah. Which is another guy you should interview because he's he's a trip. Yeah. Old school OG. But um, but I would say that like we need to respect cacao. So like I would I would encourage you to try cacao in its more whole food form. Mm -hmm. Right. So get the fruit mm -hmm. and you could eat the fruit with the bean, not dried or anything, all raw. Yeah. And then see how that affects you. And also, too, the other thing is that like some foods we need to respect, right? And some people will be more sensitive or not to some foods especially if you've been avoiding mm -hmm. it all these years, then you have a higher sensitivity. Like True. I have friends that smoke marijuana. I don't smoke marijuana. I don't like to get high myself, but I have friends that like they'll smoke and they will barely get high because they have such a high tolerance. So some people have high tolerances, some True. people have low tolerances. And much like if somebody going straight raw vegan that never did before, and now they're getting all bloated, mm -hmm. they're not used to that food. So maybe you need to, you know, 
have like this much cacao and like, oh, I feel fine. Nothing happens. And then do that for that's a good problem. Of time. When I and eat then, a little bit, I want the whole bar. I want the whole thing. Well, so that's the thing. So people are addicted to cacao because of the sugar content, not because of the bitter. Yeah. But even if I have one without sugar, or coconut sugar, I'm still like, well, just get this whole thing in me. <laughs> I uh, get and, addicted. And I the other thing it. is like, I mean, if I eat cacao, I have to do it in the morning because otherwise I won't sleep as good at night. Me too. So, I That's mean, a thing. But you have to do it early in the morning. If I do it later in the day, sometimes I don't sleep that well. So, it, but also too, there's benefits to cacao. You know, there's cacao is another anti-aging food, you know. That's what I it's hear. It's super high in antioxidants, feeds your gut microbiome. It's like really healthy for us. So we shouldn't like avoid it, but we don't want to like overdose on it. And everybody has a different tolerance. So I shouldn't say everybody should eat this much because maybe that's, you know, too much or too little for you. Mm -hmm. I don't, everybody needs to figure out for themselves what to eat. So I, that's why I really dislike a lot of people that say, eat this much of this and this, because everybody's so different. Or like, do you find people ask you a lot? Like they ask me a lot, what should I eat exactly? Like people like to know, like, what do you say when people say, John, tell me what to eat. I want to start raw, John, tell me what to eat. Or I want to start raw. What's advice you would give? So like, what I really want people to take from this is that I want people to start thinking for themselves and listening to their body. And also getting a microbiome check to see what their body and their microbiome needs. So you want to listen to yourself, what you feel like eating, but also take into consider your microbiome. Like your microbiome test says you should never eat pineapples again, right? Maybe you want to really not eat pineapples that often, but your microbiome says, you know, you should eat a lot more pomegranates. Then eat more pomegranates, right? And then focus on making recipes around those foods. Also, I encourage highly people to eat locally mm -hmm. and seasonally. Mm -hmm. That's very important, right? You're not going to find me eating pomegranates in the, or, or, or persimmons in the middle of summertime because, <laughs> I, I mean, I could get them imported from Israel or wherever they come from and they're irradiated, which I don't eat irradiated food. But they're just not good because they're just totally imported. You know, I eat things in season, so it's a higher quality, higher life force, and fresher. You know, so I really want people to kind of like tune into themselves. Like, mm -hmm. I don't go to a recipe book every time I want to eat. Like what I do is I go out to my garden. I'm like, oh, I got all these greens. I can make a salad. And then, oh, I got sugarcane right now and pomegranate. So I'm just going to make a sugarcane pomegranate dressing mm -hmm. today. Or I got a bunch of tomatoes from my garden. So I'm going to make a tomato based dressing today. Yeah. So like I always kind of see what I got. And then I eat based on what I have, not what I think, you know, not not like some recipe just that I just picked because that's what I want to eat. Today. Yeah. And can you juice sugar cane? Like, okay, there's a place in Toronto. I tried sugar cane juice. <laughs> it's so freaking good. Can you juice sugar cane in a normal juicer though? No. They told me you need like this special huge ass juicer that they have. Is that true? So you can't juice sugar cane in a normal juicer. I've tried it in many different okay. normal juicers and I've broken some. So don't try it. It's <laughs> not going to work. I'll tell you right that. I mean, some people have videos where they're juicing it in a breville. And you're going to dull your blade and it kind of works, but it oxidizes the hell out of it. So don't do it. Maybe I'll have a vacuum blending video where I show how to vacuum blend it with another juice to make a sugarcane juice mix, actually, because mm -hmm. that, that would kind of work. But it's still going to beat up the juicer. So you really need a dedicated juicer and you don't need a super giant juicer because I have a tabletop juicer. Mm -hmm. It's about maybe three times the size of the Nama, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I brought it over to my friend's place. He's growing sugar cane in Vegas. We harvested the cane out of his yard and then we juiced it through the juicer. And while you're in Vegas, uh, there's three places that sell sugar cane juice here. Oh, I gotta go. And so I made a review video okay. with Nate and Lissa where we go to each one of the places and yeah. I share exactly what they do in the cane juice and which one cool. has the best. Yeah, okay. You know. And yeah. I know somebody was asking, do you still juice cannabis? I didn't know you ever did that. Yes. So whenever I can juice cannabis... The leaves, I juice cannabis whenever I could eat cannabis. I eat cannabis also. Wow. And I don't do this for the psychoactive or intoxicating effects. I yeah. do this for the other effects that unfortunately people are not aware of. What are the other effects? Like what is So it? I mean, there's there's a published like patent from the US government on the neuro uh, protective effects of cannabis. That means it protects your brain. Wow. So like maybe Alzheimer's, maybe other diseases. So once again, cannabis is like just another plant and yeah. it has these special properties terpenes thc you know different kinds of polyphenols vitamins and minerals right and like we elevate it to this status because people like the thc content but what people don't know and that's just one of many cannabinoids in there there's many other cannabinoids like cbd mm -hmm. you know cbn and all these other ones that unfortunately are being bred out of the cannabis because people just want to get the high effect but it's all these other terpenes, cannabinoids, and other 
mm-hmm. phytonutrients in there that are beneficial for us that have there's so many studies on it on how it's so good for us in many different ways much again mm-hmm. i would also i would say cannabis is an anti-aging food because it is so high in some of these that makes sense antioxidants in there wow but you shouldn't smoke it because that's not how you get it in there because now you burn the thc it converts um, from thca into thc then you get high and now you're causing oxidation when you're smoking cannabis or inhaling it i only encourage you guys eating it <laughs> so not the oil if somebody wants to take cbd oil or something you think that that's not good so i don't recommend oils or any kind of processed mm-hmm. cannabis product because once again cannabis oil to me is like just basically instead of eating you know sesame seeds now you eat sesame oil it's yeah. highly processed and number one you don't know what is doctored in it you don't know what was done to it you don't know like you know a lot of different cbd products these days they make a white cbd powder crystalline powder made in china and then what? they put it in products and then they say oh we have cbd in there because it's just this white powder that's totally isolated so it's a highly processed food so once again i encourage people to eat whole foods whole cannabis whole leaves if you're legal to do so where you live grow it yourself I know Canada, you could grow some plants, I believe. Yeah. And then you could just harvest the leaves yourself. You could grow varieties that don't get you high. You could grow hemp varieties, high CBD Mm -hmm. varieties that don't have the THC. So you could get the other benefits besides just the intoxicating effects. Okay. You were just a man of information. I love it. (laughs) And okay, a few more questions. But I want to ask too, what does your current daily routine look like? Any skin routines, morning routines, evening, evening routines, and like what you eat in a day? (laughs) <laughs> my, currently my routine so every day is different but i mean when mm-hmm. i get up in the morning usually i drink i drink water mm-hmm. you know i have bottled water what kind of water people so are i have know. hularvia q18 wa- bottled water okay so it's fractionally distilled and it's low deuterium water which is which is totally the next level and it's it's expensive so i'm not going to say it's for everybody and you got a mail order from europe <laughs> 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 so yeah so i'm not yeah anyways but so if you can't do that, then I would recommend juicing straight leaves only. Straight leafy green juice is also de- deuterium depleted, which I believe is another factor in health and a- anti-aging, actually. But that's a whole different subject that I'm not fully versed on, and I hope to have videos on my channel where I interview experts on this topic. Cool. Um, so then I drink that, and then usually I'll get to work. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'll take my dog for a walk first because usually he's like he's chomping at the bit. If he doesn't go out, he's going to pee in the house. So I'm like, you're not peeing in my house. I'm taking you for a walk. And then I get a mile walk in every day. Nice. Pretty much with him. Yeah. He poops a couple times. He pees a bunch. <laughs> then we come home. I give him a treat. And then he goes and takes a nap. And then I get to work on the computer for a couple hours. Yeah. And then I'll work a couple hours in the morning. And then when I'm done with my work, then I'll go out and proceed with the day. So, for example, today was a shopping day. Usually Tuesdays is my shopping day. I went out to a local farm picked up produce and then i also brought a pomegranate sugarcane juice with me cool it's like half pomegranate half sugarcane with lemon yeah and so that's what i drank earlier and then i got home dealing with produce putting it away and then i had a meal of the fajoas so the pineapple guavas that i brought Mm -hmm. those are good mono meal of fajoas um and then on the way down here i basically had a uh basically it's a tetra pack of cooked kidney beans hmm and do you stop eating at a certain time or no? Or like, do I mean, some... my goal is to stop eating by nine yeah. is my optimal goal. I, li- I would like to inch it back to eight. But like if I could do nine, I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I mean, because I usually don't start eating until later. So like I really need to shift my my eating till earlier. Yeah. So like optimally, I need to I need to flip what I'm doing. So like optimally, I'd be drinking my green juices at night and like eat a heavier breakfast but like that messes my brain up because for so long i've not been doing it that way and you meditate or no so i mean i go out so like i go out in my garden so like some days instead of going shopping for example i'll work in my garden or Mm -hmm. do food prep or juice prep and that's like pretty therapeutic for you you to me that's therapeutic like just working in my garden i got like music playing in the background i'm just like vibing with my plants yeah stuff harvesting stuff doing work you know What's your favorite music? Do you listen to like high frequency or everything? Or like, you know, I just listen to every. No, like my favorite music is Josh Grogan. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Cool. Awesome. And your dog. So does your as somebody who eats so clean and eats like vegan, do you feed your dog the same way or how is your dog's diet? I know a lot of people wonder, like, how should I feed my dog? Yeah. So I have videos on how I feed my dog on my channel. I mean, made many years ago. So I think at that point he would get like a, 
a raw dog food. So it was mm-hmm. like animal foods with plants. Mm-hmm. And then I may, basically would put a supplement together with them with all these green powders and stuff. Wow. I, and, and then I, I, I'd mix in like juice pulp with his stuff sometimes. But then lately I've kind of got lax on that. And I've, he's kind of been eating basically what I eat. Mm-hmm. So like he'll eat raw and or cooked mm-hmm. vegetables predominantly. Mm-hmm. He's 12 now. So he's getting kind of up there in age. And he has an enlarged heart, unfortunately. Wow. Because he's such a lover. <laughs> <laughs> but actually the vet said that because maybe I fed him too much vegan foods. Wow. Um, that could have been a cause of his enlarged heart. Although small breeds generally get enlarged hearts. Mm-hmm. Because I've never really focused on feeding him animal food. So like I'm thinking, so nowadays he's eating more animal foods than plant foods. And I want to try to get a nice balance for him. So Like cooked or raw? Like Oh, so he eats it, it's, it's with animal foods? raw. It's basically freeze dried raw animal foods. Is what he's. Wow. Cause I'm not touching in animal foods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's freeze dried pre made patties that we it's soaked in water, and then he gets to eat them, and then we mix in vegetables with that. Also. Yeah. So okay. like that's helping to control his because he was coughing and it, it he was having some. Oh challenges breathing and stuff yeah well it's good trachea, yeah. yeah okay and somebody said have you ever had issues with oxalates that's a big thing i hear on the channel what do you think about oxalates and have you i mean what do you what's your opinion on that so i've never had issues with oxalates and if you get the microbiome test like i show on my channel you could run it through the, the microbiome biome site and then it'll tell you how many bacteria that you got in your gut that will digest oxalates hmm, wow. not to say that you know just because you got the bacteria you should eat tons of oxalates but if you don't have the bacteria, then you're not going to be able to as as be able to handle them as well as somebody that has the bacteria, right? Makes sense. Okay. And the other thing is that like everybody's different, so I'm not going to once again make generalities. Some mm-hmm. people are more yeah. sensitive to oxalates than others, and I'm not a doctor, so go see a doctor. But what I will tell you from my personal experience is that I personally have never really been drawn to oxalate-rich foods, mm-hmm. right? So if you think spinach, spinach. or Swiss chard, mm-hmm. super high in oxalates, right? Things like kale don't have a lot of oxalates in mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Uh, things like New Zealand spinach, even higher than regular spinach, right? That has lots of oxalates. I grow it in my garden. It grows really easy. But I just don't really find myself wanting to eat that a lot. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just listen to my body, listen to nature. Mm-hmm. But I'm not like avoiding oxalates because I think they're bad. Like you won't find me generally juicing spinach a whole lot. I mean, I've, I've juiced spinach and I'll juice spinach sometimes. Yeah. But like, I, I don't know. I don't, I really... My goal is to eat oxalate rich foods, but my goal is not to ignore or, you know, not eat oxalate foods. I'll just, yeah, I'll eat. I mean, I got Swiss chard in my garden. I was chewing on Swiss chard, the stems the other day, you know, they're higher in oxalates, but like they're fresh in my garden. They're super good. Yeah. So like, I don't know. So I, my goal is to like not focus on oxalates, but not ignore them. But yeah, I eat them sometimes whenever I want, but like, I just don't eat a ton of them. Yeah. Okay, cool. And And, oh, and then watch out too. Like. We think greens have rich in oxalates, but there's fruits such as star fruit, really? super high in oxalates. I didn't know that. And I, I don't really, I don't really like a lot of star fruits actually, or blimby fruit, another high oxalate fruit, which is really rare. But star fruits are more. Common. I feel like you should talk at schools or something. You just know so much. Yeah, but most people don't care about the information I have. It's too bad, especially <laughs> schools. Imagine what they could learn at such a young age and then change yeah, their life. Talk about blimby fruit, like nobody's even heard of that. <laughs> They're like oxalates. What's that? Um, okay, so Raw Martina has a cool question that I really like. I would like to know what is the one thing that could make his life even better than it is right now? A partner. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. I a just thought about that. A partner to help me deal with all the crazy things I deal with or, you know, take care of or manage in my life because... While well, my matchmaking is starting. I've, I've maxed out myself at what I'm doing and there's parts of areas in my life that I need to pay more attention to that I'm not. Because other ears are taking priorities. And it's like that for everybody, right? Yeah, true. You know. Well, so. if you guys are watching and you think you're a good fit for John, DM me or send me an email in the link below. <laughs> and somebody said, how to start your own garden at home if I live in a small apartment with only a balcony space to use? Sure. So you could have pots or containers and grow a garden in containers. So actually, when I did have a girlfriend, or <laughs> we're obviously broken up. But like I made a video at her place where she had she was mm-hmm. living in an apartment mm-hmm. and I showed from start to finish how to basically go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you know, and buy a big planter box that's self-watering and fill it up with soil and then plant plants in it. Uh, she wasn't that good at keeping it alive, but that's not why we broke <laughs> up. Um, <laughs> or, or you could have like a, you know, I also did another video with her where she has an arrow garden, which actually she really loved that because that's really a no brainer and super simple. To cool. At least 
get your feet wet and to start growing your own food. So, I mean, yeah. there's ways you could do this. Or, I mean, even if, even then, if you don't even have space, I would say grow sprouts and microgreens. Yeah, right? that's you what could, I was thinking. You could grow those inside on a rack, in a shelf. You could grow sprouts in a mason jar, for example. And there's so many more nutrients, right, in the sprouts right. than, say, like even a head of green leafy lettuce, right? And like microgreens or sprouts, are they way more nutrient dense? Yeah, 40 to 40 times more nutritious than the whole f- big food. Not to say that we shouldn't eat big food, but I mean, that's one thing I would like to improve upon is that if I had a partner who could do microgreens, I'd be my, my dream partner. She does microgreens and sprouts, and I could do all the outside stuff. And yeah. She does the outside stuff, too, but... She was like the, the queen of the microgreen and sprouts. Like, I'd be in love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's coming for you. It'll happen. And somebody said your favorite choice for B vitamins. B vitamins. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I do use, you take B12 or no? So I do take B12. So I take a comp, the compliments. So it's, it's me a, too. That one's good. Compliments. Yeah. And I tested my, my, um, my blood before and after taking it. No way. What was the result? So like it showed that. It showed that me taking it was working and improved my B and vitamin B12 and D levels. Cool. Wow. I'll put that down below. I take that too. And I take extra DHA too. Do you, what do you think yeah, about so DHA? The, so the <laughs> compliment has the DHA. Has in the there. DHA. I still and take so more. Sometimes I'll take like, you know, they say take three capsules. Sometimes I'll take four. Yeah. I do take a supplementary uh, DHA and EPA sometimes. It's the IWI brand. Cool. Okay. And somebody said, ask him about treating inflammation. See you, doctor. I mean, inflammation to me, like I barely have any inflammation. We want to eat anti-inflammatory foods Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what's anti-inflammatory. I mean, so there's anti-inflammatory foods. Once again, high polyphenol and high flavonoid foods, Mm -hmm. anti-aging foods are high, you know, um, Mm -hmm. like not going to, you know, make you inflamed and stuff. So that's one thing. But also, too, everybody has everybody's different. So some foods may inflame you more because you're sensitive to them whether it's your digestive system or your microbiome. Yeah. So like, true. I mean, I would say see a professional, but I mean, I would say focus on first eating a high antioxidant rich diet. Cause that right there and stop doing the things that are making you inflamed, man. If yeah. You're lifting weights to excess. That's going to cause you inflammation, right? If you're eating foods that are, you know, hamburgers and processed junk, that's going to cause inflammation. Yeah. You want to get rid of all that stuff and take away the problem. Right. And then focus on eating foods that are going to be the solution. And do you ever see a doctor? Do you see a doctor ever or no? So I see dentists. Dentists, I think, are probably the most important doctor people should see because yeah. people don't understand, like, the health of your mouth is the health of you. And, mm-hmm. like, I neglected this for many years. And my and it was it wasn't good. And we need to brush our teeth. We need to have proper dental care. So that's a, de- that's a doctor I see most. I don't have a general regular doctor I go to. I only go yeah. to emergency situations. Um, I probably should. I do get my own blood tested. I have videos on my YouTube channel where I get my blood tested because I think that's critical. Yeah, me um, too. I'm on my own and then get it, you know, get it gone over with my friends who are doctors and we could check it out and make sure I'm on track. And I, cool. I kind of read it myself a little bit these days myself too cool and somebody said what's the best way to store your greens after they've been picked (laughs) store your greens after they've been picked so like like my goal is to only pick my greens as i need them yeah that's the ultimate the nature outside stores them because they're still fresh they're still vibrant they're still growing and then when i need them i just pick them and i eat them That being said, I do buy things like romaine lettuce, you know, because I juice a lot of romaine lettuce and I don't grow enough lettuce to only juice it except in in the springtime. So, like, I think the best thing to store lettuce and other greens are in the fridge at the appropriate temperature. So that's the most important thing and the right humidity. So I have a video where I go into the different temperatures. So, like, usually my greens are all stored in my cold fridge. Okay. So I have three fridges in my house. One's a cold fridge. It's like 34 to 35 degrees. Oh, right wow. Above, Amazing. Right above freezing. And then I have one fridge around 40, 39, 40, maybe not 40, 41. And then one fridge is like around, you know, like high 40s, maybe almost 50. Wow. So obviously things like tropical fruits and things like summer vegetables that like the heat, like zucchini, cucumbers, better on that warmer fridge. You know, things like some fruits could be good in the mid fridge. Yeah. If I don't have room in the cold fridge. You know, because some things will get burned. Like if you put bell peppers in a cold fridge, they'll get they'll get cold burn. Or yeah, like yeah, peaches. Yeah. Like yeah. don't put peaches in your super cold fridge. They're going to get all mealies. But that's why I put them in the warm fridge. And like tropical fruits, 
go in my warm fridge. You, know, you do need degrees. a special woman that can understand all the. All yeah, these so things. like I mean, I have all these. I love it. You know, so I love it. I'm in a small apartment right now, <laughs> and I dream about having multiple fridges. So oh, I love yeah. it. That's amazing. Um, okay, somebody was asking Crystal. She's the raw food chef. She was saying, "What's going on with his move to Puerto Rico? Has he started building anything on that land he bought? You bought land there, maybe? Yeah, so that. I did buy three acres in Puerto Rico next to my friend's four acres, uh, who already lives there. I just spoke with him yesterday, and actually, probably next month, I'm going to be going to Puerto Rico. Awesome. So, at this point, I don't know that I'm going to move there. I mean, it, it could happen in the future. Yeah. If I, if me, see, like the thing is, like. I could live wherever I like. I'm just kind of in holding mode in Vegas. I don't read. I don't. I'm not like. I don't want to live in Vegas the rest of my life. I want to live somewhere different. But like, I want to find a partner, and then I yeah. want us to decide together to build a home together. And I don't want her to move into like my place now. And yeah, I want to create a life together with her and build our own house how exactly we want it. Right. That's better. Yeah. So like, I'm kind of like. So like, yeah, that's why I'm here now. So I'm probably not going to move to Puerto Rico unless it's maybe tax advantageous, which I need to look into more. But then, of course, I'd still travel a bunch. Um, mm -hmm. But right now, the property has three acres and it has a structure. It has basically a um, a block house, like a, a, a block, like concrete block, like structure. That's mm -hmm. how they build the house. Together, yeah. Right? Concrete yeah. blocks. And it's basically the framing. Wow. And so nothing else is done. So I had to I hired an engineer and then he's making the plans and getting the permits. And then I have to pay a whole bunch of money, like 80,000 or more. 80 to 100,000 to get the house finished. Wow. So that's the next goal. Yeah. And then once that's done, then I'm going to Airbnb that. Cool. My Smart. friend's going to manage it next door. And then I'll be able to go down there anytime and then just work on it, you know, for a week or two here or there. So I'll probably yeah. be going down several times a year to work on it and then hopefully find somebody that wants to like be my live in kind of like caretaker, or, you know, land keeper, caretaker, or whatever that's taking care of the land, planting stuff and doing some cool stuff. Cool. I love that. Smart. And then the, yeah. Then the goal is to have a retreat center. So my friend Kailash and I are going to have a retreat center. He teaches yoga and does all the cool things that I don't. And I do the cool things like gardening and teach gardening and grow permaculture that he doesn't. Yeah. And we both are both on with doing raw foods and eating, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. Wow. So we're going to have retreats down there as the goal. Yeah. At, at some point. That's really cool. People to teach all the stuff we know. Cool. Amazing. Okay. Well, this has been awesome. I, we're going to make the green juice. I'm going to put it in this video. So still keep watching, but anything else before we get up to do that, that you want to share with the audience, you want to share with the channel, anything that comes to mind about anything at all? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I know on your channel, Jillian, a lot of people yeah. are into raw foods and like, I just don't want you guys to put yourself in a box, right? I want you guys it's, it's to remember anything that I'm talking about is I want you guys to unlabel yourself. I know we want to be in that raw food box. We want to feel that, hey, these are my raw food comrades and all this stuff. But I don't want you guys to put yourself in a raw food box because it really restricts and limits limits you. Right. And so I really want you guys to, you know, expand your box. <laughs> if if eating, eating some minimally heat processed cooked foods feel right to you, experiment with it. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if it doesn't, don't do it right. Do what works for you. The other thing I'll say is I want you guys to get a microbiome test. Yeah. If your health is important to you. If you don't care about microbiome and you get the results and you're not going to change anything you're going to do anyways, save your money. Don't do it. But if your health is really important to you, get it because then you'll know like what Jillian's trying to get out of me. What foods do you eat, John? What, what's the best? And all this stuff. Yeah. You'll know what's best for you based on your microbiome. So you could dial it in. And if your microbiome is kicking butt, then you know like that's reassurance that your fruit diet or whatever you're doing is kicking ass and you got a kick ass score. Keep True. doing what you're doing, man. I'm never going to tell you to change. I'm going to tell you for me, what I found is that like what I was doing was not working for my microbiome and I want to improve it because long live cultures mm -hmm. have greater diversity of microbiome. And that's why I'm get, trying to get my numbers up. And what we don't understand and what I've uh, shown in some of my videos in the past is that every different microbe in our gut, you know, the more different kinds of microbes we have, the more resiliency we're going to have. Mm -hmm. And some microbes, can protect us from different diseases, which mm -hmm. is a whole nother level. This micro protects us against having pneumonia. This micro yeah. will have us. And if you don't have that microbe in you, maybe you're more prone to getting pneumonia in the future because that bacteria is going to protect you in the future if that should happen. Mm -hmm. So it's making you more resilient as a person. And I mean, that's, that's where I'm at. How can I be more resilient as somebody eating a raw vegan diet? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well or said. And I'll try, I'll do some research. I'll try link like a really good microbiome test down below and I'm going to get one. So I think I'll make a video on that. I think that sounds fun and interesting too. And yeah. Okay. I'll link everything down below for you too. All your channels, all your stuff, everything. And let's get into making the juice. I'm excited. All right. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. Okay.